Uganda, a tropical haven abundant with natural resources and a fast-growing urban population. Rapid growth that brings new challenges. It's important for the youth to tackle the problem of waste disposal in Uganda. Armed with a sewing machine, a cutting-edge breed of fashion designers aim to keep their country clean. If we don't really pick the waste and recycle it, then that means no one is going to really do that. Threading a new style along the way. You know when you want to change, you have to be part of it. These are the ecopreneurs fashioning the way to a cleaner future. Sustainable fashion is the best way to go. Uh, using green solution is the best way to go. To save our environment, to save our planet. This is Inside Africa. pattern is cut, a clear plastic film laid on top of it, decorated with a colourful African fabric. A seamstress carefully sews it together, making one of the most essential products right now, a face mask. I'm working with people who cannot hear and talk. So I, see, I saw ourselves being af affected by COVID-19 and I was scared together with them. Juliet Namuju is the founder of Chimuli Fashionability, an eco-friendly fashion brand that employs people with disabilities. The necessity to wear masks during the pandemic has hampered communication with her staff, so she came up with a solution. We cut it at the lips and then we got the polythene bag, which was transparent, to enable them to rip read my lip, and even me lip reading their lips. And I saw them when they were so happy. Juliet's inclusive face masks have sold globally. The 24-year-old was named one of the five winners in the global competition, the Adam Start COVID-19 Innovation Challenge. But the mask is not the only piece of apparel that makes this innovative designer stand out. When I was young, I used to turn what people see as trash into something beautiful like a flower. A trend she continues to this day, upcycling plastic and other waste into eye-catching Afro fashion pieces. I got inspired by my grandma who was a tailor, so she could always dispose of this trash at the dustbin so I could quickly collect it and then sew it into small flowers for myself to play with and those. This changed my mindset towards waste and I started to see the value in protecting the environment. You find waste ends up in landfills, trenches, in the environment and sometimes it's burnt which causes toxic fumes. So we collect this waste and then turn it into what people see as trash something that someone can wear and feels comfortable and it's of great value. It's a sugar sack which is being turned into durable, sustainable, waterproof garments and accessories like raincoat jackets. We are current at the production center at Chimuli Fashionability. Since the waste is being collected from the landfills, it's being brought here at the center where it's being dirty and needs to be sorted and washed and dried. And then later, we blend it with African fabrics and our persons with disabilities turn it into durable, sustainable, waterproof garments and accessories. We have showcased our upcycled garments and accessories in Leipzig, German. Our raincoat jackets, uh, made from old sugar sacks were selected for a display at the UN Global Weeks in New York and we have also held our first inclusive and sustainable fashion show in 2019 uh, where our disabled persons showcased our upcycled garments on a runway in a war to fight for their rights and also raise money such that they can acquire more skills and also conserve the environment. 
Doug Mazwebe of the Global Green Growth Institute says Juliet's designs are calling attention to a problem many Ugandans may not be aware of and its impact. The combination of the reuse and the recycle in, um, while going hand in hand with awareness raising, I think that is a, a very important a message for, for people in Uganda. As a mentor, Dagmar believes Juliet is on the right track. When I first saw the products that Juliet and her team are making, I was very pleasantly surprised. It is uh, clearly well thought through and, and carefully designed. I think the future for, for Juliet and Chimuli fashionability is, is very bright because they are working so hard to make this happen. They are going places, so uh, keep your eye out for them. However, Juliet says raising awareness hasn't been easy. People can't believe that a raincoat jacket being made out of a sugar sack that they dispose of or burn, it can be one. But that hasn't deterred Juliet from going after and reaching her ultimate goal. The impact that I hope to leave with my sustainable innovation is to have a plastic-free Africa. So we are coming up with super new upcycled products that are going to shock the world. Ugandan man sharpens his knife. Getting ready to cut through these damaged tires crowding the streets of the country's capital, Kampala. Fashion designer Nabukenya Allen will then buy them from him, transforming the seemingly useless chunks of rubber into something of value. This is the shoe made out of uh, flip-flops, tube, and then uh, motorbike tires. This shoe was inspired by um, the hard life in the ghetto. That's what motivated Nabu Kenya to think outside the box and overcome an obstacle many, including herself, face in their community. My challenge was money. I couldn't have money to buy the leather people would think about the fabrics that are expensive. So I grew up around ghetto areas and I could see these materials just dump. So I was like, okay, why don't I use these phone materials? Nabu Kenya, also a visual artist, did just that. Using worn out tires, plastic bags and bottles, she first started making artwork, shoes and purses. So this is a bag, and the inspiration is um, a tortoise. In 2015, she launched Njola Impressions, a fashion brand that reinvents industrial waste collected from low-income communities, the very places she once called home. We are more into fashion accessories, and uh, we make shoes, bags, jewelry, jackets, According to Nabu Kenya, in the first year of business alone, she made about 20 art pieces a month using one metric ton of plastic bags, hundreds of car tires, and thousands of plastic bottles. I realized it was me to show people what we can do with these phone materials that are a problem to them. Despite all the challenges, I'm here to make a change. You know when you want to change, you have to be part of it. Also, it's practical. You do your work, you do your part as an individual. This is the shop in Kamocha where we display our stuff. All the things that you see here were we made by different people whom we trained. Some are part of us, some are not. Njola Impressions designs are attracting interest overseas. But it's someone closer to her heart whose admiration means the most. <laughs> well, this is our new home that is still under construction. It's where my mother is hiding now from Corona. Everything in this house will be recycled, all upcycling, yeah? So I think I got 
inspired by this because growing up, seeing her doing these handmade things and earning money from them, that's why. Before the pandemic, Nabu Kenya says she was getting by on the money made from her creations, with visitors being the top customers. Normally we survive by making sales to these people who normally come in Uganda. So I, I remember that time when the airport was closed, everything was down. We couldn't make any sale. We are praying that all, oh, everything goes back to normal and we make the sales so that we can survive and reach out to other people. We want to keep on training people because yes, COVID is here, but people have not uh, changed their way of uh, mismanaging waste. And she hasn't given up on them, erecting a colorful mural to keep the issue of waste management on the minds of Ugandans. It's very huge. It's seven feet by 10 feet made out of 200 uh, bags and uh, they are made out of tires and flip-flops. The mural has got some words and these words are messages actually. So, Tuveka Vela means leave or reject polythene bags because they are a big problem. We are telling people, we are adding our voice. Fashionable and eco-friendly creations from some of Uganda's most artistic minds are helping in the country's fight to be clean and green. So we collect this waste and then turn it into something that someone can wear and feels comfortable and it's of great value. Despite all the challenges, I'm here to make a change. You know when you want to change, you have to be part of it. It's a sentiment many eco-friendly entrepreneurs share, using their know-how to clean up their local communities. Thank you. Ugandan Faith Aweko and her team are busy sorting through trash, looking for a very specific and all too prevalent discarded item. We are picking plastic bags that is going to be washed, so this is still plastic waste that is being um, sorted from here to the buckets that we are going to wash. From here, they will be transformed into waterproof designer purses and book bags. This is 500 kilograms of plastic and in each kilogram of, pl of plastic is 30 plastic bags and we use 15 plastic bags per bag. So after washing and drying it, we bring it over here and we uh, heat press between seven to eight plastic bags to come up with a sustainable material like this. And we need two of these to make a bag. Faith isn't creating these bags out of a love for fashion per se. She's doing it more out of a love for her country. That was the motivation to start Reform Africa, a social enterprise that tackles waste pollution in low-income areas around Kampala. Reform Africa envisions to transform Africa's waste into wealth. We upcycle plastic polythene waste bags, uh, known as the Cavera. Personally, I'm passionate about sustainability, I'm passionate about recycling, looking at how plastic has a vast effect on the environment. So I really wanted to create that change to really change uh, the waste management here in Uganda and also specifically in the slum areas. Growing up from the slum areas, of course, exposed me to a lot of life experiences. And one of something that was profound was really uh, the flooding. I thought that uh, Flooding actually was because we stayed in the slum areas or because there is poor drainage in the area. But as I kept on growing up, I realized it's because of the poor waste management. The waste management companies could not really reach out to, uh, to the deep areas in the, in the slums because of the poor roads. 
So um, we would dispose the waste in the trenches and this caused recurring flooding. If it's night and it rains in the night, we have to spend the whole night draining water out of the houses and going to school was really hard. According to the United Nations Central Emergency Response Fund, from September to December 2019, more than 300,000 Ugandans were affected by heavy rains, which caused devastating flooding, landslides and windstorms. About 2,000 of them were left looking for refuge, something Faith knows all too well. That is basically the life I lived in, and I thought maybe I would turn, um, I would turn these past experiences into into something useful to create a change. I grew up in one of the slum areas in Uganda. And every time in 2019, Reform Africa was recognized in her home country, garnering Uganda's Social Impact Award for their upcycled school and designer bags. Last year, the International Monetary Fund took notice, choosing her as a youth voice. And Faith says, even though sales have slowed down because of the pandemic, their production value has continued to increase. We started by producing over 50 bags per month to now over 300 bags per month. In 2020, we were able to sell 1,800 bags. We have over eight shops that uh, retail our bags in, in both Europe and America. And here in Uganda, we have five shops. In 2020, she also discovered a new passion, which led to a new product as well. You have your indoor plant, you place it in there so it looks beautiful. My planters are made uh, from recycled plastic, the plastic that we use for making the backpacks and different accessories. I actually began taking care of plants or being a plant lover last year during the lockdown because the lockdown was having trolls on me mentally and I thought of something to keep me busy or something that I can really care of. She also relies heavily on one of her favorite hobbies for additional inspiration. I love to go to the gym. I go three times in a week or work out here at home. And to me, fitness has helped me boost my confidence and has given me strength and it has also helped me to really be consistent in life. But when it comes to staying motivated, the energetic entrepreneur doesn't need to look very far. What keeps me going is knowing that the livelihood of my team entirely depends on the success of the business. So that really gives me energy that the business is providing employment for the marginalized women and the youth, and also myself. A banana stem is cut down. A man carefully peels the bark. Then a young lady, using what looks like a needle, painstakingly separates it into threads. And they are then hung to dry. So these are our fibers look like. When dried, the bundle is brought to this factory, where it's turned into fabric and can be used to make a number of things. And I was so amazed when I realized that in Japan, Nepal, Philippines, India, they're utilizing this thing as an alternative for plastic, polythene fibers and other micro plastic fibers. And here I am today. So I, I believe in this particular material. That belief led Maweje Muhammad Dima to start his namesake social enterprise. Welcome to Maweje Creations, where nature meets art where they use banana fiber to produce everyday items like wallets, jewelry, bags, clocks and mats. After bananas are harvested, the stem is cut to make room for a new stem to grow. The cut stem is then left to rot. Yet there is a very borrowed material which is contained in these stems. When you split it slowly, when you, when you crush it, when you use your hand and you can, do, you can keep, bring out 
get slides out of it. When you combine them, you can come up with something great and amazing. According to Bioversity International, Uganda is among the leaders in banana production and consumption globally. And although the fruit is grown mostly on small subsistence farms, it occupies the largest cultivated area of staple food crops in the country. When we're developing our particular products like the wallets, as, as he's, he's working on, we're using uh, Afri African fabrics. Maweje's unique creations have garnered international recognition, earning him nominations for both the Visionary Leader Award and the Young African Leaders Award. We are polishing. But he says what makes him most proud is the impact he is having on his fellow countrymen and women. We've been able to train over 200 and plus young people in our community. We've been uh, able to engage over 10 banner growers we're now to utilize this particular raw material. And we've been able to extract over 1,000 fibers like waste to turn them into useful material. Yeah, our, our products are, are both are being sold locally and internationally. That is, we sell in USA and German. Awareness is not really so on a higher level. The visibility is still a bit low about this particular material. But I'm optimistic as a person. It's good for young people or youth to come up with these solutions or ideas, uh, especially in the sustainable fashion in Uganda and Africa. A love for the environment is what motivated Maweje Muhammad Dima to use an otherwise forgotten material to make useful products. Sustainable fashion is the best way to go. Uh, using green solution is the best way to go. Uh, to save our environment, to save our planet. Juliet Namuju took a now commonplace accessory and gave it a much needed upgrade through upcycling, in turn lending a voice to the voiceless. For sure we are really fighting for their rights and they are not being left behind. Nabu Kenya Allen and Faith Aweko are taking aim at plastic pollution by turning waste into beautiful hand-woven pieces, providing jobs to those in need in the process. The impact that I want to live with my sustainable fashion is being able to reduce on the plastic waste pollution here in Uganda and also provide employment to the marginalized youth and women so they can have sustainable livelihoods. I just see us changing people's lives. All four eco-conscious entrepreneurs are inspired by the world around them making it their mission to find new ways to clean up their communities, preserve the environment, and to look and feel good while doing so.